I hear someone unmuted. Do you have a question? Yeah, I fixed my mic. Oh, nice. Um, do you have any suggestions as for like drawing desks or drawing, um, you know, like ergonomic drawing setups? I know some people use standing desks because I can draw for like 12 hours straight and don't want to stop, but it- With a standing know. desk? No, I, I don't have one. I just know some people use it and it's just kind of hard to think about doing that with drawing, but uh, the thing that's kind of made it really hard for me in like this recent assignment was that uh, I think I probably, um, I don't know, my wrist hurts. <laughs> probably not doing the most ergonomic thing, but. Um, so wait, elaborate the situation a little bit more if you don't mind. Oh, I'm just wondering about uh, best drawing setups for anything like in terms of recommendations for desks or anything like that. Well, I do try to make sure I'm sitting ergonomically, but I think like as far as my Wacom, my Cintiq goes, like I had it on the stand and I think I have to lay it flat because it's like there's like a part of my wrist that was just like kind of rubbing into it. It's a little raw. <laughs> okay. But I don't know. There's anything that maybe you've heard or seen that you like, that you do, anything. Or so, so I have a standing desk. So I have it set up in a way where I have my monitor on a riser. And I have like one of those like bar like bar stool type of thing. I have my key keyboard and Wacom pen. And then I, when I stand, I'm like parallel to, you know what I mean? And so then I think it's like my arms are bent a good, A good 90 degrees. Do you see that? And so then there's like this nice little um, parallel, like super effective kind of setup. Do you see that? And so my wrists don't ever really have any issues either um, ever since I stopped or ever since I started eating um, more plant-based foods, basically re removing uh, cholesterol and all that kind of stuff, it opened up my arteries. So blood flows through real good. But then also my wrists, because my arms are at a 90 degree angle. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? I'm not hearing any confirmation. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I was just trying to not be. Yeah, it's all right. You can keep it unmuted until you feel that I've answered your question. And so you can see kind of what I'm saying though, right? Like, and so right now, for instance, I'm, I'm in an uncomfortable position because I have like the, the iPad I'm drawing on, but just so I can actually present it. You know, I have my arm back a little bit like this, and it's like that. Well, I'm, I'm still standing straight, so it's not like I'm arched, actually. It's more like, um, like I'm, I have my chest up high still, but arm's back, though, which is I think is problematic. My head is tilted down. You see? Because I'm still on my standing desk. Now, when I am drawing on my iPad normally, I'm like on like a recliner. Right, so that the angle is not so extreme. And then I have my legs up and it's like super comfortable. It's very natural, you know? Yeah, I wish I could rip out like a car seat and attach a desk to it because that's like the most comfortable setup for me. <laughs> yeah, and so, the, the, the trick is, 
is to try to, to minimize the bending of your, your wrists. Uh, the trick also with the drawing is like to make it so that your fingers, that you're not like pushing hard. You know, like you should be able to push. So this is like me pushing at a medium. And this is like me pushing it hard, but like right here is enough. But even that, like I'm using the weight of my arm, like I'm pushing in from my shoulders. I'm using my shoulders muscles to push my arm in, you know, mm -hmm. instead of my wrist. You know, like using my wrist to do all the work because it creates wrist problems. You know, when you're drawing. And so it's important that, you know, you try to, to eliminate those, those issues, right? By el eliminating the kind of tension you put onto your wrist and your fingers and all that good stuff. And that, that's with like the Wacom tablet. I've gotten really good at that. And so I, I can draw for quite a bit without any, without too many wrist issues. But I also take a lot of breaks. I'll paint like for 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. And then I'll take like a 10 minute or 15 minute break. Yeah, I think that's kind of my problem too, because like I have this thing where like if I have inertia, I don't want to stop. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, another way of thinking about that problem is that, you know, you're, that implies then that you, it's hard to stay consistently good. I don't have that issue as much. Like I'm pretty, I'm pretty aware of what I can do. Does that make sense? So I can like stop at 30 minutes and not freak out. Like I'm gonna lose my superpowers, <laughs> you know? Like, oh man, I was on a roll. Like if I stop now, like, you know, I don't know if I'll be able to, to rekindle that, that flame. Uh, I don't have that sentiment anymore. I used to, but I don't have it anymore because I've trained myself out of that. Mm. Ugh, excuse me. And so one way to think about this is like the way that, I think we talked about this before, but um, like Stephen King, he's a professional and George R. R. Martin's not. So George R. R. Martin is a great writer. He wrote some of the, some of the good uh, best stories, you know, that people have fallen in love with, with the Game of Thrones fan franchise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Stephen King writes books. You know, like he just knocks them out. And his strategy is pretty much similar to mine, which is he just does it. Like he just writes like six or seven pages a day, you know? Yeah. And he does that for several months and then he's got a book. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely. And he pumps out like a book every, like two novels every six months. Like he pumps out like three to four books every year. Where George R. R. Martin can barely write like a few chapters every year. And it's because of the same problem that he runs into this situational um, awareness of like, I need to have like a really strong understanding of, um, or like he, George R. R. Martin runs into this problem of like, I need to have a strong, um, How, how can I put this? Like he, he needs to have it feel inspired, right? Mm, where yeah. where Stephen King just knows how to be inspired and it's by reading lots of books and magazines and news articles, stuff of this nature, you understand? And so then he can continuously create amazing content because of that. What I'm trying to say is that George R. R. Martin doesn't do that. He's reliant too much on it just to come from his, his bosoms and it just doesn't come, so he feels weird, and he just gets to go out and do weird stuff to get inspired, you know? And so the strategy I'm trying to really kind of get back to for you um, is that if you, it's hard for you to take breaks, um, and you feel like because you're going to lose that momentum, you, you should still take those breaks because you're going to teach yourself how to not worry about that. You know, not worry that you, if you don't have momentum or not, like you just know that you should take, take breaks. And I would actually argue that taking breaks will allow you to look at your image um, uh, more, 
honestly too, right? Like you're going to look at it more proactively. Does it make sense? Yeah. And when you step away, that's what it does too. It's really nice to like step away and then like get like a second opinion, but it's like, it's your opinion still, <laughs> but like you, you are able to kind of take a moment to step back and see what you did wrong or what you could have done better. Yeah, so whenever I step away, that's almost always what happens. Like, I look back, I'm like, oh, okay, look what I could have improved upon, and I just go ahead and make those improvements. Um, but yeah, the, the setup I have as a standing desk, and I prefer standing. Um, because I'm having these issues with the iPad, I can't necessarily stand just yet. Uh, I have a few solutions that I've, I've considered. One is to get a uh, tripod. Because there's like iPad uh, tripod mounts. Hmm. Okay. And I was like, oh, that'd be good. That was, that's something worth trying. You know? Yeah. And I could put it on my desk or I could put it on the floor, obviously. You know? So, we'll see. But I'm going to buy like a really nice one. And the one I have my eyes on is like $70. <laughs> so I'm just like waiting until like it's reasonable for me to spend such money. Anyway, anyway, hope that helps. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions? Hey. Uh, hey. Uh, I have a question about uh, art stations, and uh, I haven't made it yet, but well, uh, is. Uh, how much work is there? Uh, how much is the ma market saturated? And uh, is all the are, are all the jobs uh, uh, reserved for experts, or there is some for intermediates? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, how, uh, there's no way for me to know any of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I know that I've gotten job offers through ArtStation. I know other people who've gotten job off offers through ArtStation. Uh, the, 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 the question that you should be asking is uh, how large of a network do you want to cast? What? How large of a network do you want to cast? Like how big of a fishing net yeah, do you want yeah. to cast out into the ocean? Yeah. Um, and if you want to have a good chance of getting a job in the industry, you got to have your work available for people to find you. And if you're not on like one of the most popular art sites out there, I feel like that's kind of short-sighted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm, uh, I, I have to be a freelancer. I don't, I don't have any much, much opportuni opportunities here in Serbia. Yeah, so I would say that there's always job postings on ArtStation, and you can always apply and what have you. But there's always people scouting people on our station. It's becoming more and more popular for that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if it's like a lot or if it's a little. Uh, I definitely get like one or two emails uh, at least a month from really good prospects, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I've done work for them and it's good. So I, I think... I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you're just holding off, you know? And you're all you're also you should not be afraid. Man, I hate that it does this. There's this one thing that it does. I wonder if it's because of this this setting. Hold on. You see, I like that it's warmer because I feel like that's more true to um I think that's more true, but it's all right. I'll just deal with it. Let's see how this works. I'll work with from this for a while. <laughs> just some. Yeah, I'll do a better job of this. I'm gonna I'm gonna start messing around with the lasso tool. 
we'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, you, you want to cast a wide net, you know, a wide network of connections and places for people to find your artwork. It's, it's really helpful to do so. Um, if you don't do that, yeah, you're going to um, run into this issue where people won't find your work. You know? Yeah. 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 Like I, I post a lot, in a lot of places. Specifically these days, mostly art station. Because it is just really good. Yeah. There's no argument. Yeah. There's no argument to not have an art station. And so, um, I would say I wouldn't worry about that. Like that, I would say the, the thing that you should worry about is just having good work. Yeah. Okay. Cause that's, that's, what's going to get you to jobs at the end of the day, having like, yeah, yeah. And then, and then you can start worrying about like, what are the better platforms out there? Right. Yeah. Um, but even, even with that being said, it's, it almost seems still like important to kind of, put your stuff on to um, uh, art station. Yeah. Also, I have another question, if anyone else who doesn't want to ask him. Uh, do people judge your artwork, uh, like if it's overly sexualized females or something too morbid or something like that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I'm not sure exactly the point of that question either, but are, do people judge, like, in, in what ways are you imagining? Uh, and judge, like, I don't know, uh, uh, he looks like a maniac, he only draws girls or, some, or something like that. Oh, I see. I don't know if people think that. You know, I don't think people think that you're a maniac if you only draw sexy, no, sexy girls. Let me ask you this question. Um, do you feel that way when you look at other people's artwork? Uh, I don't know. No, I look at the skill mostly. Right. Um, yeah, but sometimes you see it does come to mind. Like they're all drawing girls all day. And... Yeah, okay. And then the next question I would have is uh, what's the problem? Nothing special, I guess. Nothing, right? Nothing really entirely wrong with it you know you may not agree with it there's i know plenty of artists uh specifically my friends who are um female artists who will get real aggravated by that kind of stuff right yeah yeah but that's another thing that's about them giving them a bit inferior uh, making them a bit inferior maybe Something. yeah there, there's this the i i understand the argument right i understand that the complaint um, of objectifying women in, in art, right? Yeah. But uh, in my experience, a lot of these artists who do these over-sexualized images of women uh, aren't like the kinds of people that they're sought out to be, you know? Um, so one of my friends, for instance, uh, he draws super pornographic images of like women, like not just like sexualized, like straight up just women being penetrated by like crazy dildos and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but he's like, if you were to meet him and talk with them, you would never think that that's like his perception of women. <laughs> like he, they should yeah, all just be like raped by these giant alien dildos, whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just what he likes to draw. He's really fascinated with like phallic shapes and pornography, you know, uh, but he's married and his wife knows that he does all this, crazy drawings and and she's and, and ironically she's she doesn't actually hold that same kind of appearance you know like the super busty uh, hourglass shaped women you know what i'm saying yeah. like the kinds of things that he draws like his wife doesn't actually resemble that she actually looks just normal i mean she's she's pretty and she's beautiful to him you know in different ways and so i remember people were up in arms of his drawings one time and I kind of defended them because I was like, you guys don't know anything about this guy. You're just judging him based off of his artwork. It says nothing about who he is. And um, 
And people got mad at me for being critical of them, being critical of him. But I don't care because he, I generally believe that he was doing nothing wrong. You know? But I was asking, could it hinder my ability to get a job? No, he's, he gets jobs all the time. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the better artists out in the industry because he has a whole other portfolio that's just like portfolio stuff. You know, in fact, I don't think he, he shares the same space. Like he understands, he's not stupid. You know, he's not naive. He knows that like um, that kind of stuff next to his Halo war stuff isn't probably the best strategy, yeah. you know? Um, but he's, he's, um, he's entitled to draw whatever the hell he wants, man. People need to relax. And if you're, if your uh, comment was mostly about like, should I, have them share the same space. I mean, that's up to you, but I would say that there is a fair argument to say that people will be, um, there are going to be some people that will question that and other people like me, uh, just won't care. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. You know, like if I was hiring you, um, and I was hiring somebody for their skill, not for their, um, opinion, then that kind of stuff just doesn't cross my mind. I can separate, I can separate the, um, the artist from their art. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. You know, and I think a lot of sensible people can do the same. And so there, I don't think there's any issue with drawing over sexualized characters. Um, nobody, nobody makes the debate when it comes to men being uh, overly sexualized or objective. I think that's always fascinating, you know? Um, so for instance, like you see characters like superhero characters with their shirts off all the time, right? There's literally a scene in Thor where he's just shirtless. He didn't need to be, there's no reason for it, right? But he is, and it didn't bother me. He's a good looking dude. Um, there's, there's a reason why they wanted him to have his shirt off <laughs> okay because he's a good looking dude he's he's a very attractive uh man and there's going to be female audiences that see that or not female specifically but people who are attracted to to men right they're going to see that and they're going to be like oh you know and and there's nothing wrong with that dude <laughs> we're human you know sexuality is just inevitable man everybody got it and yeah. so, I guess we separate it better than women. I guess. Well, I'm not saying that's either. I wouldn't even go that far. I'm just saying that there is the reason why the argument probably fits more on uh, women focusing on uh, on objectifying is because most of the media that does this is mostly catered to men, right? It's like superheroes are mostly for men, you know. Yeah. At least originally it was. I think it's changing now, obviously. But here's a good here's a good clue to this. Like Marvel is one of the largest uh, film franchise things out there, right? Yeah. Yet they still yet to make a movie with a female lead on her own, like a standalone movie, right? They have two that they definitely can make something like the Scarlet Witch and um, Black Widow, right? Yeah. They didn't make the standalone movies for them. Why not? I don't think it's because of misogyny. <laughs> okay. I think it's because they're focused on uh, their, their, their main audience. Right. Yeah. And I'm not saying that uh, someone like some young boys or men wouldn't want to enjoy seeing a Scarlet Witch or Black Widow movie. Like I definitely would be into a Black Widow movie. Right. Like they're, they're kind of making one right now. Right. There was the one with um, Jennifer Lawrence. It's like Red Sparrow. It's like pretty much the same <laughs> like premise. Okay. And it looks great. It looks amazing. It looks fascinating. But there's just something um, like, you know, for instance, Atomic Blonde came out and it just doesn't do well. It just doesn't do nearly as well. Right. Like, uh, I think the best example of this is like, you see um, one that did really well. Did you see, um, what was it? Uh, Mad Max, right? You loved it, right? But see, it's debatable that Mad Max was actually not the protagonist. It was Furiosa. 
right? Because he was in it, and he was he was kind of the first people, the first person we saw and engaged with. But the story really was wrapped around her journey, not really his, right? But see, that's that's kind of my point is that um that that character in that movie, she was badass for very clear reasons that only I think like um someone who's watching would recognize that a female would only really be able to understand. But even as a male audience member, right, we can relate to the understanding of what she's trying to get away from, you know? And I think movies like that do better. For instance, uh, Aliens, right, with, um, you know, Ripley, yeah. right, Terminator with Sarah Connor, yeah. right? So Ripley was just like the most sensible uh, person on the ship. She didn't do anything special. I mean, you could have probably replaced it with a, a dude, but the fact was that she was just a smart individual. We didn't see it any other way, right? Um, but Sarah Connor can almost only be done by a female. You know, like the love that a mom has for her child is definitely different than a man does. It's not that it's better, right? Or worse, it's just different, you know? And so that's why it's much more believable. That's why she's even more badass. You understand? So I think Marvel understands this. They can't just like, well, we'll just make a, you know, if they do a Black Widow movie, right, they have to really think about what would be a great way to, to kind of make a female lead be the thing. And so, I, like, again, I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think uh, um, sexuality is, is a big deal. I really don't. Okay. But I will say that a lot of the, the things that I think the, there's a lot of politics around this that people have their own opinions on, right? But I, I really believe that the best solution to this issue is that people just need to make their own content to, to combat things that they don't like, right? Yeah. Instead of telling other people what to do. Yeah, I wasn't uh, all about uh, sexuality. I also about something maybe more too morbid or something like that, that, that could carve up path and make you uh, be, uh, how can I say, uh, others aware. Yeah, the only thing that I can think of that you can do artistically where people might be questioning your, 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 your like you as an artist is maybe like something related to child porn, oh. right? I think most people agree that's just like, that is really beyond bounds, you know? Like if you were to illustrate a bunch of children being uh, raped, like I don't think people would be into that, <laughs> okay? You understand, like, there is, I think there is a line, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or if you were to, to do illustrations of, like, people being murdered in, in a way where it's, like, clearly, um, you know, has some sense of discrimination. Like, but even that, I think, is debatable, right? But, like, definitely children. Like, people do not want to see children hurt, even if it's just fake. You know, like even in movies, they like hardly do it, right? And when they do, they always have to, like in Game of Thrones, like when the little girl gets burned alive, I'm not sure if you saw or been caught up with spoilers alerts, little girl gets burned alive, they don't show it. They, I'm sure they've shown many other instances of people being burned alive, right? They just didn't show that. And for good reason, because nobody wants to see a child be burned alive. Like, but it was part of the story, so they had to do it somehow. And so the way that they did it was they just you just hear the screams and you see the reaction from the mom. Yeah. One right? of my th thumbnails was uh, something like a pregnant woman and with her, I don't know, some mixed up. And I thought, like, I don't like it, but it maybe too much, you know. No, that, that to me seems safe, right? Like, you, even if, like, if it's, like, a, like, some sort of, like, morbid in a way where, like, the the child is like now a ghost or some sort of product of like, if it's just like deliberately like a, an innocent child and there's no, um, it's just like straight brutal, you know, then, then I think, yeah, you'll, you'll, people will, will have questions, but over sexuality, um, uh, or even like any kind of satire or stereotype of a certain group of people or a certain type of people, 
I don't think it's as bad as people might think it is. I really don't. Right? Yeah. People get offended, definitely. <laughs> don't, 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 like, especially now, maybe there might be a, an argument to say that that is kind of, you got to be careful, right? Because people get really offended really easily. And it, it's one of my biggest pet peeves. Like, people need to, like, learn to just separate, um, you know, someone's opinion and just interpretation of something versus action. There's a difference, right? If I, if I were going on the streets and believe that there should never be, let's say, a female superhero movie, and I really believe it because the reason was that I don't think females can make good superheroes, I don't think that's great. And obviously do not hold that standpoint. But I do understand why they don't do well a lot of the times, right? And the people who make these movies don't understand why they're doing well, right? And I'm trying to, trying to you know, cast that knowledge out there because I want there to be successful films with female protagonists, right? For instance, me and my friends, that's what we're doing right now. One of my stories was wrapped around a female protagonist, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's, in, it's inspired by my wife's uh, life story because she's had like a lot of shit happen to her in her life. And I just wrapped it around some fantasy, you know? But the story is really between the, the love between a mom and a, her son. Something that she talked to me about a lot and was really inspiring, you know? Something that I have, I have a love for my son and my daughter that is different than hers because they carry the kids in their stomach, you know? And so the way that she explained it, it's, yeah, it's just, it's, it's different, man. And I thought that's fascinating. And we can put a super, like, we can put a lot of the story wrapped around that and focus less on, well, look at this badass female character that can punch real good and jump real high, right? Like, that's not enough. Like, you gotta, if they're gonna punch and kick and do a badass stuff, you wanna, you wanna believe that there's a real strong reason for it uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, because for whatever reason, I don't know why, I'm still kind of trying to figure out why there's this perception. People just don't believe like with Atomic Blonde, right? Like that movie that came out with Charlize Theron. For whatever reason, people just don't have, don't believe that like a like a 130 pound or 120 pound woman can take out like a, a 300 pound man, right? For whatever reason, they can believe that like a little boy that get that got bit by a spider can all of a sudden do it. But then like some woman that's been trained as a fighter can't, I don't understand. I don't understand why some audiences just don't understand that it's still a fantasy, right? Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out why that's, that is. Like, we don't see a lot of action hero movies where the lead is just a female and she, she can just be badass. Like, look at a, a, a movie like John Wick, right? We don't need any other explanation that he just used to be, like, a badass, right? And then he just goes around kicking people's ass. He's like, they killed my dog. They took my car. And then he just goes around shooting people. Like, why can't? we have that with um, uh, female. I don't know. I still am trying to figure that one out. Well, I guess it doesn't make much sense with males. But... Well, I'm just saying, because even Keanu Reeves shouldn't be able to beat some of the people up the way he does, right? Yeah. But for whatever reason, we're like, we were okay with that sense of disbelief then, right? Uh, because in uh, Mad Max, like, you can make that argument that, uh, Furioso couldn't really beat up Mad Max, right? Yeah. But she almost did. But nobody was like batting an eye on that. They thought that was fucking dope. And I'm, I'm thinking, I have to do, do more research. Maybe it's because of the way she fought. Maybe it was more believable. Like the way, like she was more, um, she was more like, uh, like she cheated a lot, right? Like she was just like really like, used everything she could to, to bring him down. You know what I mean? Yeah. And maybe that's what it was, right? It wasn't just like brute strength. She was just like tactically like taking him out, you know? And that's probably more believable for whatever reason. Yeah, makes more sense. I don't know. I, I'm not going to talk too much about that. But my point is, is that don't be afraid unless you know, like, you know, you, you should be smart enough to know, like some things people will not be a big fan of, right? And if that's something that you like to do and it doesn't really speak to who you are as an artist, but it's just something like you like to draw. Like I like to draw like really like, you know, beautiful women dressed in these weird stuff, yeah. you know? 
And nobody, no one's ever given me a hard time about that. In fact, that's one of the reasons people enjoy my work is that those specific artworks, right? Yeah. Uh, and both sides, right? Nobody flips out. And I think, uh, I, I remember I critiqued somebody in a workshop because they had like this, this chick that was just half naked with like some weird stuff going on. And I, I criticized them saying like, you, you're not picking a side, right? Like you, you are like sexualizing this character, but also have some weirdness in it. Right. But it doesn't, it, it falls short because it's not really, you're not really focused on either or. Right. So if you're going to have like this half naked chick and that's like your goal is to like be like, make this really an attractive character drawing. Right. Yeah. Then go for it. Like go full throttle, like make that character, you know, cause that's hard to do too. Uh, or if you're going to make it weird, then embrace the weird, right. Go full weird. Right. So then it, it won't matter in each, each situation, whether it's overly sexualized or it's not. Like in, in each of the situation, you've picked a side and you've embraced it and you're making the best artwork you can from that. You know? But if you just draw like a, a chick with big boobs and it's like poorly drawn, uh, I think that you, you need to work on that. Because at least, at least you got to make it look good. Um, one of the best examples of this would be like uh, Sakimi Chan. Do you know Sakimi Chan? Oh. You don't know who Sakimi Chan is? Oh, no, no. All right, I'll show you real quick. Hold on, let me. Bro, uh, it's not something like anime. Yeah, so hold on. Sakimi. Yeah. So she's like, she's picked the side, is what I'm trying to get at. Right? Are these some of her newest ones? You see this? Yeah. You know, and if you follow her on Patreon, she has versions of a lot of these characters without their clothes on. So she's like clearly picked the side, is what I'm trying to say, you know? Yes. And and people love this. Like a lot of people really enjoy this because two things are true. One, like she's really pushing the sexuality of a lot of these female characters, right? Yeah. But then she's also um, drawing them very well. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yes. Right. So there's there's two things you're either here for, or you're here for both, right? You're either here because she's a really good artist and you really like the way she draws and paints, which many people generally are, like that aren't deviant art specifically, or you're just like to see, like really beautiful women. Yeah. But she also draws men too. She has some good. I think some people are being really critical of her because of that. And then uh, she's like, okay, I'll draw men too. Like, and she draws men sexualized too. Yeah. Yeah, and well, the answer is that people more look at the skill if you're an artist, not, uh, not uh, something else, not a communicator of some other sort. Yeah, this is so good. Oh, one thing I've learned from social media is that I have no idea what people like to look at. <laughs> That's another reason I use Navigator Window my, for my monitor. Oh, you guys are talking about something else? Oh, about the the screen stuff? Yeah. My point uh, uh, about all this, though, is uh, draw what you want to get work for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's okay. Nice. That's that's really like I was kind of going around the edges on that one, but hopefully you understand. Like, yeah, sure. I was trying to really kind of show you that, you know, wh whether there I, I, again, I don't know whether someone is more, uh, like, I don't know what it's running in people's minds when they feel when they look at an image and why they get upset or why they don't get upset. Uh, I don't, I can't read people's minds, uh, person by person, but what I can say is that generally speaking, um, you know, it, it's better for someone to draw and paint the things that they want to paint without fear of consequence, right? Than to pander to everybody and what they want you to do. I think it's true when it comes to films that do well versus the ones that don't do well, the ones that really pander tend to not do as well as the ones that don't pander right? The ones that know who their movie is for. So if you look at like the Fast and the Furious franchise, 
like they know who their movies are for so they don't pander to anyone they just make it the way that they like i imagine they're in the room and they're just like okay we got to think of another way to have these cars fly off a building you know like how can we have the most craziest cinematography you know you know what i mean like what is the the best way we can like make cars explode or do cool stuff you know yeah and and that's why those movies keep doing well yeah yeah i guess i asked asked it probably uh, in some part of my being, I like to offend, but that's it's something different. That shouldn't be professional. Yeah, if you like to offend, again, I don't think that's too much of an issue, especially yeah, yeah, if it's in, in professionality. Is something else. Yeah, it, it's if it's in good taste, I think it's fine, right? Like yeah. if you're if you're just trying to make a statement, like, yeah, oh, yeah. look, I'm just drawing whatever I want to draw. If you don't like it, you yeah. don't like it. I just yeah, realized I drew the well, clavicle. Well, really a smart question. I could have got to the conclusion also. But yeah, I want to hear about you. Maybe you had experience. Of yeah, so I've never lost a job based off of my opinions. No. But then again, I don't have really wild opinions. I think the closest one where someone, where people were really upset with me uh, that I had, the, the one that I was kind of shocked and I was actually kind of disappointed in a lot of my friends and fans where when I had the, when I was in the defense of the guy that uh, worked at Google, that I don't believe that he should have been fired, that I don't necessarily agree 100% with all what he wrote, but I didn't think that he was a misogynistic pig trying to like tell women to work, that they were inferior to men. Uh, people read that into his manifesto. I didn't, I didn't see that. And, um, and people were really upset with me. They were like really mad. They thought that I, I was not defending women's rights and their uh, I wasn't defending them enough and that allowing this correct, correct. to defend him meant that I didn't care and I was just kind of like what <laughs> you know what I mean like I, I have no idea where they get that from my whole point is like the guy had an opinion and he got fired for his opinion and it wasn't like he was going around saying like women are stupid and they shouldn't work here and they, like Google's better than the only men he was basically saying hey, we have a problem of diversity at the company that we've recognized and it hasn't got any more diverse. So maybe we should think of a different alternatives to solve this problem. That was his argument. People didn't see that. And he was right because Google went from 70% white dudes to 30% minorities uh, and women to then two years later, after they've made an attempt to be more diverse, right? They're trying to become more diverse after you realize that we have lots of just white dudes working here, right? 70% of the company. They went from that to 80% white dudes two years later. Meaning that they, what they were trying to do was not to have that. They were trying to like kind of equalize and they added more white dudes. And he was basically saying like, you guys don't see that as a problem. <laughs> you know, like if your goal is to diversify, you failed miserably, you know? And then they fired him because they're like, oh, he's, we don't share his ideals. We believe that women are just as capable in tech than men. And he was like, uh, I never said that they weren't, you know? And that's where I, I was like, yeah, I was kind of confused. I was like, wait, what? Why did they get rid of him? And he, he basically proved their point. And people got mad because people were just, they just didn't want to hear it. I remember one person, uh, she messaged me and she was just like really upset. And she was telling me, so it's like, you, you're putting this guy's, um, you're putting this guy's free speech over women's rights. And I'm like, no, I'm saying everybody should have free speech, including women. Yeah. And he was just having an opinion. He wasn't saying anything. Like if he was saying something crazy, then I would, I don't think there would be any argument. Right. Uh, but he just wasn't. And, and I was telling her, I was like, look, like I get it. Like you, you it seems bad, but you have to look at it from the angle um of this dude like he was trying to to like equalize the the environment and then she said to me um something that i think she took back after i pointed out something to her she said well you'll never understand because you're only a man and then i said to her do you understand 
that that's actually sexist to assume that I can never understand what you feel like. Like, I get it. I understand what you're trying to say, but then you're saying because I'm a man, then I can never have an opinion about women. You know, it's like, that's crazy, dude. <laughs> and when I told her that she was just like, okay, well, that's not what I meant. You know? I'll go get her. No, I'm picking up Penny too in the notice that I'm picking her up. Oh, okay. You can just leave the baby in the living room. I'll be out there in a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so, like, that, that was, like, the closest, I think, that I got to, like, people really who were, like, like had, like, torches, <laughs> you know? But it wasn't even that bad. Like, it was, it was the worst that I, I'm trying to give, like, the worst example of having my opinion being out there people being really upset with my opinion, you know? And the worst that happened was just people just kind of called me names and were, were uh, disappointed, quote unquote. But I still kept getting jobs and I, these people that did even felt disappointed in me were still, they're still my friends, you know? And it's not like they completely banned. I, there was probably some people that were not my friends, but they were just people who followed my work and they probably stopped following me. But what interesting thing that happens uh, after that thing is I actually got more people following my work. Um, and I don't know why. I think maybe it's because some people felt the same and they just felt like they couldn't say something. And uh, I was just brave enough, I guess. I don't even know why it's bravery. I just was saying, like, I just defended them. And so my whole point is, is that, like, I can't think of anything that I've done outside of that that really got me in a lot of trouble. And even that, like, I didn't, I don't, I've never backtracked what I said because I really believe it, right? And I've had, I've asked people to tell me, to explain to me why I'm wrong. And I actually I had a great conversation with somebody about it and, and they, we were having a good civil dis disagreement, you know? And at the end, like, he still felt that I was wrong and I still didn't see why he was right, you know? But we're still buds and I see him post stuff on our, on, on Facebook. He comments on my stuff all the time still, you know? Like we just disagreed and like, <laughs> you know, and, and it's fun. I think if like you go out of your way to, to, okay. If you go out of your way and say things that are truly offensive and truly like, like if you say some stuff that I've seen people say on the internet, like all white people are racist. I've seen people say this and I was just like, yeah, that, that's the kind of stuff that gets you fired from jobs. Yeah, that, that's the kind of stuff that gets you fired. But if you're just saying, you know, this thing that happened, like, this is my opinion on it, you know, I'm open for discourse, you know, uh, it's really hard for people to get upset or even try to take you down. Um, so I would say don't worry about that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, just if, as long as you understand that what you're saying uh, may turn some people off, but you feel like you have a strong bearing, but more importantly, that you're open to uh, debate. I think that's also really important. So, for instance, uh, I, I was pretty s strict about how I felt about guns, you know. But then I was talking with somebody about it, and then they brought up a really good point that made me change my mind, you know. Because I used to be all for like, a complete gun ban, but then after they talked to me about like how Switzerland has guns and they're fine, I was just like, well... If that's true, then I can't dispute the truth, you know, just because it doesn't help my argument. Like my whole argument is I want people to stop getting shot for no reason. <laughs> you know, I don't care how we get that to that solution, you know? And uh, he was telling me like, well, you know, they don't have that issue there. And I was like, well, what are they doing differently then? And one of the things that I thought about was like, well, they have better social programs. We don't have that here in the States. Yeah, yeah. So I've changed my point, my point of view. It's like, okay, look, we can keep our guns, but then let's fix our social programs so that we can help people that are in need. People get desperate. People do desperate things. This is probably why this probably does explain why we have such an epidemic here in America, you know, um, that or a complete gun ban, <laughs> you know, I don't care. I just want, I don't want to be afraid of like when I go to Disneyland, when they check your bags for guns and weapons, to go to yeah. Disneyland, that's a, that's crazy, dude. That's insanity. Yeah, can I, you know? I, I, I direct you uh, uh, to another topic? Well, well, I'll, I'll, let's give someone else a, a, a opportunity to yeah, ask a question. Of course, of course. 
someone else. So, yeah. so does anyone have any questions that's probably more related to art anyway? I'll yeah, spend yeah. some extra time. If no one has this, mine was also related. Just give us some time and then I'll, I'll, I'll answer your other topic too. So don't worry. Does any, if anyone has a question, I can't read. I can't read the the chat because it's not up on my, on my iPad. So if you can unmute your mic, that'd be great. Or any comments? I mean, we have um, two female artists in here too. I would love to hear their opinions about the stuff that we were talking about earlier, if they don't mind. If you don't want to, you don't have to. If you feel like you don't feel like saying nothing. It's fine. I can't read the chat. I should go see what the chat says. Yeah. PH man, that is a lot. What? Do I hear hungry dog? <laughs> you do. You do hear hungry dog. No? No other questions? Everyone's pretty solid. Oh, I just have a, I, I typo a lot because like my hand is all uh, out of gas. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, I've talked to someone about the whole Google thing a lot. And it was someone who I disagreed with about how he, he actually had kind of similar point of view to you, but he felt like Google had the right to fire him because. Uh, They're a company. Because he made, they, he made other people upset or something. He made it an uncomfortable and uncomfortable environment. <sighs> yeah, and that's a, that's a fair argument. If people feel uncomfortable, you know, it's hard to deal with. I, I here's the, here's a part of the story that people didn't realize. Did you know? Like, he didn't try to do that. He was actually trying to keep it internal, and he was he oh, was yeah. actually open to people disagreeing with him. He was trying to he was trying to find a solution to this problem. And what I guess started the argument for him was that he was in a meeting uh, where they were talking about diversity and like better ways to be open to people's differences in, uh, in the workplace. Right. Mm -hmm. And he was in one of those meetings and they were talking and he had a, he disagreed with one of them. Right. Like he's, well, I don't know if that's true. Right. And they were like, well, you, you don't understand because you're like a white cis male. Like that's like literally what they said to him, you know? Yeah. And he was just like, what? Like in his mind, he didn't say he didn't respond back because he was like taken back by that. Like they basically said, y "Your opinion doesn't matter," and so he was like really taken by that. So he's like, "Well, okay, I feel like if I say anything else, they're gonna flip out on me, right?" Yeah. So that's why he felt the need to write it, put it into the internal forum, and uh, someone just didn't like it, and then that they went public. It wasn't ever intended to go public. He didn't oh, yeah. want it to be. I, you know, like I have actually like read the entire thing looked at most of this, this stuff that he cited as sources, uh, went over it, discussed it with several friends, stuff like that, just because, you know, things like that are, like, that's kind of, a, it, it became such a thing, and I'm interested in that kind of, you know, uh, sorry, I'm like, ugh, I'm a little. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Well, I mean, my, my whole point is, like, I, I actually do agree that, Google's in their rights to fire him. Technically, right? yeah, they are. But I'm like saying, like, well, that sucks because he just had a disagreeable opinion. It wasn't like he was like this crazy misogynistic pig. That's the problem I have. I have friends who share his same opinion, right? You know, they have like a very nuanced opinion about sexuality and differences between sexes, you know, but they're never going to go out of their way to hurt people maliciously right right like i have friends that i i know deeply and that's what kind of got me i was like this could have been any of my friends you know i feel like in any other context like nobody would have flipped out on this person like if he wouldn't have never wrote this I, he would have been perfectly fine still working at google with no problems he was getting like promotions he was respected amongst his colleagues you know mm -hmm. it was only after that people were like oh, i didn't know he was a closeted misogynist you know, <laughs> it's like, no, I don't, I think he was trying to make a good point that maybe there's a way to solve this problem other than just 
Like, because I guess the strategies before was to try to educate the culture, right? And then just go and hire just a bunch of people of diverse backgrounds, whether they were qualified or not, right? Where does that come from, though? Because it's Google. Uh, I can't imagine them trying to hire people that aren't qualified for the job. That's literally what he was saying. He said that that's what they were doing. That's why he was kind of disagreeing with them. And he, he said, we shouldn't just hire people just because they are a thing. And he, he was saying that because women aren't staying in the workplace because they're hiring them. And two things would be true. One, they'll either feel uncomfortable in the boys only club environment. Right. And then two, they just probably weren't qualified. You know what I mean? Not because they were a woman or because they were black or whatever, just they just weren't qualified, you know? And I'm like, yeah, you don't just do that, right? Like, and I think most people agree with that, right? Like, you should hire somebody based off of their merits, not because of uh, their background, right? And, and I think that's what people don't like to hear. They don't like to think that Google <laughs> would, would do something like that that they would be like looking for the best and brightest talent uh, around the world, you know? Uh, but the reality is that a lot of the talent that they hire is just happens to be white dudes, you know? And they recognize that and they were trying to say, well, maybe there's a problem here, but they're, they're looking at it differently. Because would you say that Google as a company is sexist? I have no idea. Yeah, but I mean, I just like there. I can't tell. I can't really speak to that. But I don't would, know anybody that works there. But would you just take a guess to right think now. that that's true? Like, do you really believe that? Uh, I highly doubt it. Uh, let me give you a good example of a company that I did work for. Uh, two companies, okay, and give you kind of a, a, a way to think about this that I don't think a lot of people really consider. I worked at Blizzard. Blizzard's also like seventy percent white dudes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm a minority when I was working at Blizzard. I'm a black Korean. I'm like double minority. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew female employees like Laura Austin. She worked there or she works there. Right. And she's one of like the, the, the key illustrators at the company. Right. I know plenty of female artists who I know Jessica Drew. She's like one of the, the lead modelers there too. Right. And so it's clearly not sexist or any of that, right? Or racist or any of that. Like, Blizzard's not. They just aren't. But yet they still have nothing but white dudes at their company. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I've worked and, at companies where it's been that situation too. Yeah, and did you ever felt feel mm -hmm. like they were, like, any of that? No, I'm, I'm sure you didn't. Maybe you felt uncomfortable in certain circumstances. Like one of my students gave a really good point that I thought was actually more valid than anything, right? Which is that people just feel uncomfortable in a group of people that they just don't necessarily immediately associate with, right? So if you're surrounded by a bunch of dudes, you know, and you're like the only female artist, I can see how that would be awkward, even if none of them are, um, you know, sexist or any of that, right? It's just, it is intimidating. I can, I can imagine that. I've imagined that and experienced that myself when I used to go to gay clubs with my friend. Right. Like he, he would never go to anything and I was trying to help him out. I was trying to be a good friend. So I'd take him out to all these gay clubs. Right. And I definitely felt uncomfortable in a lot of situations. It didn't mean that I didn't believe that gay people should have rights to anything. It just, I just felt uncomfortable. Right. This is completely different from what I'm used to, you know, yeah. but I didn't, you know, I didn't feel like, Oh man, like because of my uncomfort, I should do something like I should, vote to against gay marriage <laughs> you know i didn't think that ever i just was like Ugh, you know like this is weird right uh, i remember when i went to the bathroom and some guy was like looking over the the stall like that doesn't it just never really happens you know and he was just like peeking uh, uh like sneak peek at my stuff you know but i wasn't bothered by it entirely i was just like oh man this is awkward like i, I just didn't cross my mind that the men's restroom is mostly just dudes who are attracted to other men, <laughs> right? There's a separation of bathrooms usually to prevent this kind of uh, awkward sexuality issue, right? And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Um, I was talking to some lesbians uh, like at a sketch group once and they brought up another interesting uh, 
conundrum that I thought was really fascinating. They were talking about how, because they're lesbians, so they're gay too, right? But most gay clubs are primarily gay men. So they're trying to get hooked up and try to have a good time, but it's like everyone here is not attracted to us and we're not attracted to them, <laughs> you know? And I was like, that's fascinating. I never even thought about that, you know? But they were, we were talking about it and I was like, see, that's the kind of stuff that is really interesting to hear about, you know? Um, but does that mean all gay clubs are misogynistic, you know, and they don't want lesbians there? Or is just different cultures demand different environments, right? Nobody makes this complaint about the nursing industry. Like nursing is primarily female based, right? Uh, education is primarily female, you know? I think, I think it comes for, because tech is such an important industry and um, I, I would basically say more like, uh, politics is more important where there should be more representation just because there are certain things that aren't being considered. I agree, man. I, I don't, I don't think anyone disagrees that there, if you are qualified, it shouldn't matter. Right? Like if you are like a badass tech engineer, then there should be no reason why Google doesn't hire you. Like if you're better than all the rest, you know, I think everyone agrees with that. Right. My point is, is that what if just people just in general aren't interested in that, right? Like I'm not interested in tech, but it doesn't mean that um, I should just work there because we didn't need to fill the quota of black Koreans that they don't have. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's insanity, dude. And so I'm just saying the solution really isn't about like blaming Google for this. The solution I think is actually to what your point was. Actually, that's a good, that's the best point that I think uh, that matters. Is having representation at like larger leadership roles that control policy and then the flow of information, right? Mm -hmm. Because then when you, when you, when your daughters and sons go to school, they get exposed to the same kinds of stuff and then they have access to that same kind of information, right? Yeah. And if they choose to do a thing, then they choose it by the merits of what they want to do. Right. But there's some, there's some, damning statistics that just kind of show that maybe people just in general based off of uh, your gender just have general different interests for instance there's more women that are going to colleges these days right than men yet there's still me more men taking a lot of these other jobs right it's not because these women aren't qualified a lot of the statistics show that some of these women, once they would find like a, a, a man and then they would get married to him and then they just like, I don't want to work, you know? And I know some people just don't like that idea that women just want to get married and just, you know, make babies, but some women do, you know what I mean? And to, to be fair to that, like I actually wanted that. I remember me and my wife, we were talking about that, <laughs> you know, this is why I work from home now. I don't like the, the idea of status. I hate it. In fact, I think uh, it's not even healthy for men to, to aim for that ambition. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. it, it, it would be like a situation if like only men could smoke cigarettes, right? And then women were like, we want to smoke cigarettes too. And then, mm -hmm. all right, great. Women can smoke cigarettes too. But then it's like, but technically none of us should be smoking cigarettes. That's kind of how I see all this. Does that make sense? What, what do you mean by that? That I don't think that there should be a lot of emphasis that success means more money, more status. I think we should change that to be something like uh, having more fulfillment in your life, whatever that may be. Does that make sense? It doesn't sound like the system we have at all. It's, exactly. <laughs> I hate it. People die, commit suicide. Uh, countries that have large um, uh, focus on status, like uh, you know, ma major Asian cultures like uh, China and Japan and Korea have high suicide rates. Do you understand? Yeah, I've heard. What I'm saying is like, I agree that everything should be equal access, but I think that it's the, the, we should flip the role for a second and be like, listen, maybe we should also find a way to just remove this whole fucking like system that we have in general that uh, whether you're man or female or black or white puts you in a really dire situation where you don't see your kids and you just work yourself to death, right? and build a system where people can do what they really love to do and nobody cares 
You know what I mean? Like nobody's like, we need more women in tech because we need to have that equal representation just because, right? So, or we can just have everybody do what they want to do. And if it just happens to be lopsided for whatever reason, fine, you know? And like, so, so let me give you a good, good example, right? Like I'm trying to get my daughter to play with Legos because there's a lot of research to show that Legos is associated with like um, smarter kids, right? That your kids end up being better at math and um, any kind of scientific kind of like logic-based thinking, you know? So I'm really trying to get her into it, but she's just not into it, you know? She just isn't. And I'm like, I'm kind of backing down. Um, and then my son, though, on the other hand, loves it. Like, he can sit there for, like, literally for an hour just by himself building Legos. Like, by the, following the instructions and everything, you know? But what my daughter does that's impressive is that she'll make her own worlds, so it's better to just buy a box of just random Legos and just let her go at it. And she can do that for hours. So there's a difference in what they're interested in. And I'm not focused on, well, I want my daughter to be a tech or engineer. I want her to just do whatever she fucking wants to do. And if she just happens to be more creative, then that's so be it. That's where I'm going to put her, you know? Yeah. If she's more like me, you know, like enjoys creative adventures more than the logical one, you know? then so be it. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not necessarily gen basing that on gender, right? I'm just saying that's just how she rolls. I'm giving them equal access as much as possible, but they just clearly show different interests. You know what I mean? And, uh, and there's nothing wrong with it. Might also be just, you know, considering other influences, you know, there's whatever that, you know, they yeah, want. She, she loves pink and she loves princesses. My son loves cars and trucks. And I, I swear to you, I've tried, done my best to not make that the thing. <laughs> they just, for whatever reason, I remember I was talking to one of my fe uh, f uh, female friends, like who's a really good artist about this, because I was like, you know, I really want to know what, what you think. Like, what can I do to rectify this problem, right? Or not a problem, but just to, to, to kind of figure out how to navigate this situation, you understand? And, and she said to me, well, if you want your daughter to try out Legos, why don't you get like the Legos that have a lot more colors, you know? Cause she said when she was a girl, she was really into like a lot of colorful stuff. It wasn't necessarily pink. It's just, just like, she was like color, like color, you know? And I was like, okay. And so I tried that and it worked for a little bit, but the thing that really got her attention was Minecraft. <laughs> so she was really into Minecraft Legos. But then again, what are Minecraft about? It's about creating your own shit, right? And I was just like, okay, so this is just who she is. And so uh, I was talking to her. I was like, would you want to like make your own clothes? You know, like, because she likes to dress herself up. Uh, she was really excited one time. I cut like her shirt for her to make one of those like sleeve shirts where you have your arm exposed, you know what I'm talking about? Or your shoulders exposed. Because mm -hmm. she saw a picture of it and she's like, I want that. And I just made one out of my old t-shirts. And she loves it. And she wears it even though it's garbage, garbage work, right? And I was like, okay, maybe for Christmas, I'm going to buy her, like, there's this, like, uh, entry-level sewing machine where you can make your own, like, fabrics and stuff like that. Like, she likes to make jewelry. She likes to do all that kind of crafty stuff. She's very crafty, you know? Yeah. So I was like, well, what if she's just really, what if I flirt with the idea that she becomes, like, an epic fashion designer or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's fine. Like, I want her to be happy. I want her to be successful in the, in the, in the sense that she's doing what she loves. My oldest son, he wants to go to college, but I told him, you don't have to. Just pick a thing and just be really good. And he started skateboarding, and he's getting really good. And he's like, I think that's what I want to do. I want to be a professional skateboarder. And I was like, so do it, you know? And then my, um, my youngest teenager, he loves kids, right? He loves hanging out with the kids. He's good with his little brothers and sisters, right? Mm -hmm. He likes food and cooking. And I was like, do that. You know, cooking is that's a good career too. And it's like, or kid, kid care is really good career. Right. And a very fulfilling one. You're helping change lives that, that would be on a, on a general spectrum, a more feministic uh, job. Right. Mm -hmm. But I don't see it that way. I'm like, do what you fucking love. I don't care what the statistics on average say, you know, but what I'm trying to say is like, I don't get suspicious, like weirdly suspicious if I see companies that have a majority of one type of group of people is what I'm trying to get at. Right. 
especially since I worked there and I've experienced it and I just didn't see it. So I live in Irvine and I got pulled over yesterday. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I get pulled over a lot. Even my wife was laughing at me. She was like, why do you get pulled over all the time? <laughs> and I was like, because I'm like, I'm driving in our broken ass car, you know, because our car is bumper like falling off and it's like all scratched up. It's like older car. We've had it for a while. And uh, I didn't shave. And I like my natural eyebrows, like make a slant. So I have a kind of like a natural bitch face. <laughs> and I'm like dark skinned, you know? And I'm just like, I just look suspicious. Like in Irvine, everyone else is driving like Teslas and like Bentleys, you know what I mean? <laughs> so like he's, he's profiling me and I get people get offended by that. But I mean, I fit the bill, dude, you know? And I don't get upset about it because I know I understand. Right? I'm not like, oh my God, not everybody who drives shooting cars are criminals, dude. How dare you? No, I just prove that by the time he op when he comes to the window and he talks to me and I talk back to him and I'm not rude. I'm not uh, making any assumptions of why he pulled me over. You know, I'm just like, yes, officer, is there a problem? <laughs> you know, and then as soon as I, I can tell, I can see it in their face that they're just like, there's not going to be a problem here, you know? Yeah. And he's like, you know why you I pulled you over? And I'm like, nope, no idea, dude. That's like literally what I said is I have no idea. And he was like, oh, your, your back light is out and your stickers to your That's bumper. always the best thing to say. Just yeah. Say, I have no idea. Yeah, so I have no idea. You know, and I wasn't trying to make any assumptions. And I made an assumption before he even pulled me over because every time I got pulled over, it was usually a, a white cop, right? It was actually a black cop, right? And so my point is, even though he's black, I would still – would have had the same suspicions it doesn't matter dude <laughs> you know and and i get i get why people get upset with that i understand it i really do but i've lived on this planet for 33 years now and nobody's held me back i live in a i live in upper lower class right um i've every goal that i've ever tried to achieve i've achieved it i've never felt truly oppressed i've had people look at me weird i had some lady um not giving me her lap and napkins at one time it was kind of weird uh, and I think it was because she was racist, <laughs> but uh, I, did, I just, I was like, yeah, what a bitch. And I just walked away. You know, I didn't lose my lid or anything. Um, cause I know they exist. People out there are fucking jerk offs. Right. Yeah. But I just, I read if too I, many stories of other people's experiences. And yeah. And those are anecdotal. You, you, you know, you can't rely on that too much. Right. You have to rely on, um, your own experiences and the reality and navigate the world that way because you might misstep and you might end up firing people that may not actually deserve to be fired. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get at, you know, like save your energy to get the real scoundrels, the real people that are terrible, terrible, terrible people, you know, because if you start to group everybody in this category, it's really, really sketch. The, a good example of what this looks like is what's happening in Canada. Apparently there's a new law where you can't say bonjour. Hi. What? Because it might offend people because people who feel like will only speak French or only speak English. Cause when they say bonjour, hi, because uh, Canada is bilingual, like a bilingual country, right? Where English and French are like equally said, right? Mm -hmm. So most restaurants say bonjour, hi, as a way of saying, do you speak French or do you speak English? Or would you prefer me to speak to you in French or would you prefer to me to speak to you in English? It's just fucking completely innocent. But some people are like, no, like, speak English or only French, you know? Okay, that's really weird. That's the extreme mm -hmm. version of what I don't want our country to go to. Do you understand? And it starts with stuff like this, like firing people because of their opinions. Do you understand? And the next thing you know, there's policies. And then the next thing you know, you can't have any dissenting opinion because you can go to jail or be fined. That's insanity, right? And so we got to be really cautious of what we fight for and what we're fighting against is what I'm trying to get at. There are some real people like, for instance, the Charleston, um, uh, uh, yeah, Charles, was it Charlesville? Charleston? Where the, the guy, yeah, the guy ran over like the protesters. Mm -hmm. Like that guy's a real Nazi white supremacist. Like, yeah, he should be Charles sent to jail. <laughs> huh? You. He, he corrected us. It's Charlottesville. Charlottesville. Thank you. Like, that's a real fucking scoundrel, and that guy should be dealt with. 
you know? Um, but then if you say some like conservative speaker is equally as bad as that person, I, I that's where I'm like, wait a minute, you know, take it easy. I lean mostly to the left, but I've been becoming more and more center because I've been seeing um, the opposite side, like what people on the right really hate about the left. I'm starting to understand what they're talking about. And, but I, I still believe in like centralized um, social programs, like government ran social programs. Well, hey, like what you were saying before, like UBI is being considered more and more. About, you, know, you were saying before about people being able to do what they would like. It's just a matter of how it's implemented. It could be really good. It could be really bad. But other countries are doing it, have, have tried it. What is it? Like uh, Switzerland, I think Finland. Um, yeah, totally. That's my point. Like, the problem that I'm seeing on both sides, nobody wants to take anyone's opinion seriously. Either either you're um, like a far right white supremacist, <laughs> racist, sexist monster, or you're a liberal crybaby, like hippie, like vegan eating pussy, <laughs> you know? And it's like, okay, guys, like, like think about like me, for instance, like I am a, I'm for like, universal health care, education, and base income. But then I'm also against affirmative action. So one is left and one is right, right? Uh, I'm a vegan, you know? Mm -hmm. And then what, what is another right position? Oh, yeah, and I'm a heavy on free speech. Like I'm, big, I'm more in favor of free speech from, for anything else. Free speech is a very powerful tool, mm -hmm. you know? It's also... It used to be a very left-leading point of view, but I don't know where it changed. But now it's uh, mostly found on conservatives. Conservatives use it all the time, right? And so I try to land my political views and perspective on what I think makes sense on the facts and statistics because it's, it's easy to debate with your own experiences, right? But it's harder to digest reality, okay? Um. Because, like, for instance, I'm black Korean, right? So affirmative action is really the conflict. Because affirmative action says if you come from, like, inner cities and you have, you're down on your luck, well, we're going to give you an opportunity to go to schools. But the way that they do it in a lot of states is that they give you more points on your SATs, okay? So if Harvard requires you to have a 1,500 and you only have um, a 1,300, they'll give you that 200 extra points so that you can go to Harvard now if you're black. But if you're Asian... Uh, they'll take the 50 points away from your test. Okay. That's nuts, dude. I didn't know that's how it was implemented. Yeah, that's that's why it's been failing. More people, uh, black kids, are dropping out of colleges because they're just not qualified, dude. They don't belong there. Not because they're black, because they're just not smart enough. That's it. And it could be because of bad luck of like you know having a terrible education system, having a broken family, all that stuff. But there's plenty of white people that have the same problem, you know? If you want to, I think if you want to help like disadvantaged um, minorities, it's more like you have to start really early. When Absolutely, you, you can't just put people into colleges just because. Exactly right. Absolutely, it's, just, it's such a problem for any policy to to see through long term type of. Yeah, check this out. So if you're if you're black but you're not from America, like if you're from Jamaica or something, mm -hmm. uh, they actually have higher household income and they do much better in America but they're black too. So there's definitely something systematic that we did to our, you know, fellow Americans who happen to be black that has still poisoned the well, right? But I really believe it's gone though because my dad is black and my cousins and uncles are black, right? And my dad got out. He found a better life for himself and that better life found a better life for me. And then that better life for me is now gonna have a better life for my kids. He broke the chains that bound him, right? But my uncles, some of them are in prison. Some of them are dead. Okay. Yeah. And they all came from the same background. My dad found a way out. My uncles chose not to. Okay. My mom, fucking farm girl from Korea, same thing. Like she found a way out. A lot of my uncles and cousins are still on the farm. They have no idea the internet exists. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seriously, they don't. Some of them just have no idea. And, wow. and, and so I see this and I'm just like, wait, like this is what they mean by the American dream, right? Mm. 
And so I just don't believe all this extreme. Like we had a black president for eight years. Are you, are you serious that people just flipped? They just changed their mind? Like, you know what? I was actually always racist. No, people just want to change because people are really suffering and people are really, I was shocked. I had no idea that this was going to happen, right? Um, but as I started to look into it, because I was, because I was so blindsided, I wanted to know more, right? So then that's when I investigated and I looked into it. And that's when I found out that there's just, people just are hurting, dude. Middle America is really suffering. Poor America is really suffering. Middle class is shrinking, you know? Uh, and it's only going to get worse, right? Because with automation and, uh, better computer software, right? Autodesk just fired like 1500 people, right? Yeah. Um, you're just gonna, there's gonna be less need for people to work because you're gonna have machines do it, right? So you have to have base income, uh, education and healthcare because that's the way for people can get out. That's the, the true equalizer, you know? So mine is pragmatic. Mine's more, uh, has more foresight than short sight because uh, it's gonna be real bad. Like and we're, when we get into the 2020s, it's, you're gonna start seeing what I'm talking about. Okay, whatever side you belong to, it won't matter. You're going to get fucked. Okay, <laughs> unless we start to solve this problem, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. And so people need to stop focusing on these little like micro aggression bullshit and like start focusing on real issues that are going to really affect everyone. Like I think this whole racism stuff is a distraction. I think generally speaking, people don't believe this. Look what's happening to Hollywood right now with like the sexual misconduct, right? Like these people are being destroyed, you know? So clearly the country agrees that this isn't acceptable. So where does this culture of like, we don't approve of this come from? It's just, it was kept secret, right? But the majority of people don't agree with it. They just don't. And so I think, um, I think it's good. People need to start to realize, yeah, no, we don't give a fuck if you're on the left or the right. Like if you <laughs> show your dick or you start doing stuff to people that they don't want, like you're going, you're going to pay, Right. And I'm, I'm actually happy to see that that's kind of like a nonpartisan issue. <laughs> At least it seems that way because we still have the president who seemed to be the most, <laughs> he's clearly done some terrible things to women, but apparently he still can be the most powerful man on, our, on earth. Anyway. Yeah. We're living in just the weirdest times. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. My point is about art though. Don't worry about it guys. Just like this, <laughs> this thing is going to pass like your opinions on how you want to draw sexy women or sexy men or whatever disturbing looking images. It's all going to pass. People are going to have their opinions, but eventually they're going to get over it, you know, cause they're going to come back to their senses. Um, and so, uh, but right now, yeah, people are really heated about all this stuff. So I would say, yeah, don't worry too much about it. Here, I'll answer one more question, but before I do, I want to go check on my baby. He's like in another room. I uh, hope he's not dead. Give me one second. Love you, little dude. Okay. Love you, little dude. Thank you. All right. You guys there still? Oh, no. All right, Luca. Luca, I think you had a question, right? Luca, are you there? Hello? I think he pooped. Oh, yeah, he pooped badly. <laughs> Are you guys there? Did anyone have any other questions? Hello? Can you guys hear me? Oh, Luca left. Oh, that's all good. Uh, does anyone have any final questions before I roll out? And change this baby's poopy diaper. All right. Well, thanks for uh, the the talk, guys. I appreciate the questions and commentary. Thank you, Vanessa, for chiming in. Appreciate it. Don't want us to feel like a boys-only club either. Yeah, but I got to change this diaper now. All right, guys. Well, have a great weekend. Appreciate your guys' good work. Keep it up. And uh, talk to you guys soon. Laters.
Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.